Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 747. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about why people started a side hustle, because you know how I love to share surveys with you, and I found another good survey that was done by the Hartford, and this is something I'm going to be sharing with you, but before I do, I want to acknowledge some of our international listeners, and of course, thank you to everyone in the United States of America. But we also got some chart recognition last week from New Zealand. We were in the top 50 in New Zealand. Also got some chart recognition in Korea, Saudi Arabia, Portugal, and France. So thank you all for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart. And I hope you're sharing it with friends and family wherever you are. So let's talk about this survey As I mentioned, this was done by the Hartford. This comes to us from CNBC.com and was written by Jill Cornfield. And it says, about 57 million Americans have a side hustle, according to the Hartford. The insurance company conducted an online survey of 4,135 U.S. adults in May, 1,033 of whom said they have a side business. More than half of these part-time business owners work full-time. And they say it takes about 10 hours or fewer every week. Half of those with a full-time job said at least some of their time off goes to working on the side gig. So I just want to pause there and say, you know, I've been encouraging you for years to start a side hustle because there really is no reason not to use your expertise and knowledge to have an online business and continue your income for the rest of your life. It's easier now than ever to do that. So I really encourage you to learn the technology, learn how to either do your business online or consider one of these other side hustles that we're gonna talk about today where other people are having success. The article goes on to say, but the most interesting finding was no matter the age of the business owner, nearly two thirds said finances were the main driver of starting a side hustle. And then they have a little bar chart here, and it says, why do people start a business? Of millennials, 72% said it was financial reasons, 18% said it was to make a change slash lifestyle, and 7% said it was to pursue a passion. Of the Gen Xers, 62% said it was financial, 20% said it was to make a change slash lifestyle, and 8% said it was to pursue a passion. Of the baby boomers, 56% said it was for financial reasons, 19% said it was to make a change slash lifestyle, and 12% said it was to pursue a passion. So kind of a big difference there between baby boomers starting for financial reasons, 56% versus millennials, 72%, and Gen Xers, 62%. The baby boomers tended to do it a little bit more to pursue a passion. The article goes on to say, so much for passion projects or escaping the rat race. It makes sense, said Nick Loper, founder of Side Hustle Nation. He started his first side business for money and it grew into a passion. Actually, Loper's passion is now side hustling. His site covers myriad aspects of starting a side gig with lists of ideas, information on affiliate marketing, starting a blog, and support for would-be side hustlers. Loper cites Cal Newport's so good they can't ignore you, which says following your passion is ridiculous advice. First, true passion is rare. Second, there might not be a market around your passion, Loper said. Another reason not to start a business around something you love, it can cut into your enjoyment when you find yourself struggling to monetize and scale. You should definitely have some interest and expertise in the area though. Well, I just wanna pause there and say, Of course, they're right, but it also does help if it's something you really enjoy. If you love working on cars and 
restoring old cars as your side hustle, well, of course you have to have a passion for it. But I can also see where if you're an artist and you love to paint birdhouses, there might not be a huge market for birdhouses. But then again, now that you can market to the world, maybe there is because the market's a lot bigger now than it used to be when you could only sell your birdhouses to your neighbors or on the street corner or maybe a pet store. But now because you have Etsy and you have eBay and online sites where you could actually market your birdhouses, you could have maybe a thriving birdhouse business. The article goes on to say, Loper created a footwear shopping comparison site in 2004 as his original side hustle, and it was not an undying passion project, but it did reflect an interest, and the growth of e-commerce made it a viable business model. One caveat, if you're doing it just for the money, you're unlikely to have the motivation to keep going if you don't see immediate results or returns, Loper said. Once it starts working, is the money enough to keep you going? Well, I want to jump in here and say I completely agree with that. You can't do it just for the money because that is not going to sustain you. If you don't have any passion or interest in what you're doing, doing something you really don't enjoy and trying to make it a financial success is an uphill battle. The article goes on to say, Loper says side hustle should be fun and it's best to keep an open mind about the chances of a business working out. A lot of people fall into the trap of thinking they need this paradigm-shifting, never-been-done-before idea, Loper said, but most business ideas have been done before. He points to Google, which was not the first search engine invented, and the proliferation of multiple sushi restaurants in many neighborhoods as proof that a successful business does not need to break new ground. Try a new business for a limited period of time. If you see some results, fantastic, Loper said. If it's not working, just move on to the next idea on your list. Although small business owners want extra income, for most, it is not enough to take their business full time, according to the Hartford. Just about 25% of side business owners said their business could become a full time job or primary source of income. A third said that was highly unlikely. Well, I want to pause there and say it's always good to do some testing of your business before you go into this full time. And it's not a bad thing to see other people having success in this line of work. You don't have to have an original idea. It can be a variation of something that someone else is doing. But you should do some testing and see if there is interest in what you're offering. It's called proof of concept. And I've talked about that in other entrepreneurial podcasts that I've done. So you can check that out. All right, then it goes on to have a chart here and it shows the profile of side business owners. And it says 33% are Gen Xers, 26% are Millennials, 38% are Baby Boomers, and 3% are the Silent Generation. I think those are people that are born prior to 1946. The top five industries, 19% are retail, 16% are service businesses, 14% are professional services, 6% are transportation, and 6% technology. And then of people who are employed full-time elsewhere, 61% are full-time somewhere else, 18% are retired, 11% work part-time, and 4% are homemakers. An hour spent on their side hustle each week, 49% spend 10 or fewer hours, 31% 31% 11 to 20 hours, 13% spend 21 to 30 hours, 5% spend 31 to 40 hours, and 2% spend over 40 hours a week on their side hustle. When asked about the likelihood of taking their side business full time, 53% said it's highly unlikely or somewhat unlikely, and 27% said it's highly likely or somewhat likely. And then it says, millennials are more likely to say that their side business could become their full-time job or primary source of income than other generations. 40% of millennials say it's highly likely or somewhat likely to become their full-time job. 30% of Gen Xers say their side hustle is highly likely or somewhat likely to become their full-time job. And 17% of baby boomers said it's highly likely or somewhat likely to become their full-time job. And finally, the greatest barriers to making their side hustle business their primary source of income are mostly financial. 48% said, I don't believe I can make a living at this business. 
33% said, I can't afford to give up my income from my full-time job. 27% said, I don't want to give up the benefits from my full-time job. 23% said, I like my full-time job and I don't want to give it up. And 13% said, I don't have the time to dedicate to the business. The article goes on to say, it's empowering to make that first dollar, Loper said. He quotes a friend who said, we're in this transition to a freelance economy. The people who are going to be primed for success are the ones who are already thinking of themselves as entrepreneurs. A side hustle mindset can fit nicely into an existing nine to five life. Think of your day job as being your biggest client, Loper said. It doesn't have to be your only client. End of article. All right, well, I will post a link to this in the show notes so you can take a look. You can see this nice colorful chart. They've got some links in here that you can click through and get some more information to help get your side hustle started or furthered. But I do think it's something to think about and to start working on, and this might help you get started in the right direction. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available so you never miss one of them. And right now we have our Summer Sizzle giveaway going on where there are 25 prizes to be won. But before I give you the details on how to win, I just want to share some of these reviews with you. These happen to be from the Amazon website on the Wealth Heiress book. And this review says, fantastic resource for the smart investor read this through my lending library. My wife and I are fans and also listen to Linda's podcast. Her insights inspire us to become smart investors and see large trends. She outlines steps to building and maintaining wealth, even with a modest income, and provides simple formulas to remember easily. She has changed how we invest and think about our money. It changed our lives. Thank you so much. That is really nice to hear. And I'm so glad that you're putting these resources to work. Here's another five-star review. Great book. This is a great book, easy to understand. and gives you steps you can apply now. I am a podcast listener and did not know what more the book could offer as Linda's podcast is incredibly informative. However, I was pleasantly surprised and found the book to be a great help in laying the foundation for wealth building. And that's from Martin. Thank you, Martin. Appreciate that. And another five-star review, Easy to Understand Gem-Filled Guide. I've been listening to Linda's podcast for a while and finally got her book. There are some real gems in this book written in a way that makes it easier to understand. There is a little investment jargon, but it's one of the best financial books I've come across. Thank you so much. And Carmen also said, I highly recommend. Linda P. Jones has eased my mind that it is never too late to start taking mindful steps to achieving financial freedom. Investing in the stock market has always been a mystery to me, and Linda has not only demystified investing, but also how to look for specific signs that indicate the direction the economy is headed. I'm a faithful listener to her podcast as well. Linda is a calm voice of reason amidst the chaos that seems to be surrounding us at this time. Well, thank you, Carmen. I appreciate that. That's awesome. And Sonia, five stars. My net wealth has increased by 50%. I love this book so much that I read it cover to cover once a month. I've made notes in the margins and highlighted the sentences that really spoke to me. Well, thank you for that, Sonia. A lot of people tell me they like to have that physical copy of the book. Even though now the audiobook is available, they like writing in the margins and making highlights and reading it over and over. So thank you for that. Let me just tell you how the contest works right now. We have 10 of my books that I'll be giving away, physical books signed by me, 10 of my Wealthy Mindset Blueprint audio sets valued at $197 will be given away, and five one-on-one wealth mentoring sessions with me. All you need to do is leave a review for Be Wealthy and Smart on iTunes. If you have an Apple phone, if you have an Android, leave it at stitcher.com, that's S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R.com. Just go and search for Be Wealthy and Smart. It'll pull up the podcast. You can leave the review there. And if you leave a book review on Amazon, that will get your name in the drawing two times. And winners will be announced on August 31st. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. 
Check out our website, blog and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.